Yeah, you showed me something I haven't seen. I've seen these Japanese karate masters from Japan, and, and they're in their 30s and 40s. And how can someone of 18 years old really have anything to show me? And uh, they said, hey, trust me, you got to come see this guy. He's incredible. Meet him. And I believe that he went to one of uh, either the Seafair celebration or one of the Chinese heritage festivals or something and saw Bruce practice. But his first meeting with Bruce is, is the story that he used to always tell that, uh, of course, sticks out of my mind, was they met at a park here in Seattle. And the friend who had told him to come meet Bruce had said, hey, this is Bruce they met. He said, do something to him. Try and do something to him. And my dad said, well, in his head, Anytime somebody says that, you know, you, you're probably in for, for something. And so he said, I, I threw this kind of half-hearted, big looping punch at him. And the next thing I knew, I was trapped and on the ground. And these fists were coming out of my face. And wind was hitting my face so hard, it was just terrifying. He said, that was the moment I knew this. i got to follow this. You know, this is, this is somebody I need to learn this from. And, and beyond that, um, Bruce was the kind of person, even at 18, that was imbued with you know, the ancient wisdom and philosophy of Zen, uh, Taoism. Uh, he was uh, into Krishnamurti and, and all these deep philosophers and things like that, and was, was very well versed in, in all of these things. So while he was a typical 18-year-old full of energy and, and um, he liked to tell jokes and all those things, he could just my dad said he could tell you the, the dirtiest joke one minute and then just blow your mind with some kind of deep philosophy the next. And, um, so through, of course, the following years, my father became a student and they developed a friendship and my father um, ended up uh, becoming a senior most student and running the school once he left for California. Um, so I want to digress a little bit and talk about my, my father's life, how it ties into his relationship with Bruce. Um, at the time, my father, um, not too too far before, um, had had been interned during the Second World War. He was born in this country, he says, in the United States. Uh, when the war broke out, of course, in the West Coast, he interned all the Japanese Americans uh, for about for four, almost five years. So. Um, through that experience, he, he left kind of the camps kind of a broken man. Um, he had grown up at a small town on Palm Bay, uh, here in Washington, and they were the only Asian non-white family there. Um, so he had grown up and gone to a little one-room schoolhouse and was a was a great student. And um, his parents had always taught him, "You're second class citizen. You're nothing more." They would always reiterate that to him. You know, don't think you're, you're as good as these white people. You're, you know, as good. And he would argue with them. Well, it's not what they teach us in the Constitution that we're equal. You know, in the Bible it says we're equal. And his parents would, as much as he argued with them, keep telling him the same thing. You're a second-class citizen. And sure enough, when the war broke out, um, those those things seemed to come true, and he realized that that's what his parents were trying to protect him for, from you know, from telling him those things. So. Coming back to where I was, he he got out of the camps, um, was sort of emotionally, and mentally defeated, and he had told me stories about, you know, when I when I walked down the street, he said I just if there's a white person behind me, I felt like I had to stop and let them go by because I just didn't feel like I was going to have to walk in front of them. Um, he would go to barber shops and restaurants, and people would take their clothes. Um, on several occasions, things like that happened. You know, he was called a jab and all these things he was born in this country and uh, so through all that difficult experience and meeting Bruce um, you know in his words Bruce helped him become a man again and helped him feel like he was a human being again um, you know his teacher and friend told him you're as good as everyone else no better and worse and so through that relationship and the practice of martial arts he regained his confidence and belief in who he was and so um, just a little bit about my father and, and the impact that Bruce had on his life. And so, after Bruce's passing and, and even during his life when he left Seattle and my father was running the school here, um, he has basically spent his entire life teaching um, for free for years just 